Hi everyone! In this video we're going to learn about the second translation theorem. Here it's definition. So basically the second translation theorem gives us a shortcut for evaluating the Laplace transform of the following function. So this is the product of a translated function and the unit step function. Notice that the amount of translation matches the value at which the unit step function changes its value from 0 to 1. So according to the second translation theorem, the Laplace transform of the such function equals to the product of e to the power negative a s times the Laplace transform of function f of t, this is the original not shifted function. As always, looking at a few examples will help us to better understand the idea of this theorem. This is our first example. As you can see, we need to find the Laplace transform of the function that's defined by the product of this shifted function t minus 3 squared and the unit step function at 3. Once again, I am reminding you that these values must be the same for this theorem to work. So according to the second translation theorem, the result of this Laplace transform will be equal to the product of e to the power negative a s. So Unlike the first translation theorem, here we're going to keep the sign. So I'm ready to write down that I'll have e to the power negative 3s. And then I have to multiply it by the Laplace transform of the original not shifted function. In other words, I have to find the Laplace transform of the function t squared with no translation or shift. To obtain it, I just get rid of minus 3. And that equals to 2 factorial over s cubed. And that is exactly what we're going to put in the final answer. So the final answer for the given Laplace transform is e to the power negative 3s times 2 factorial over s cubed. So it's 2 e to the power negative 3s. Pretty easy, right? So that's how helpful the second translation theorem in this case. And just to make sure that everything is clear, I'm going to add a few notes. So the function t squared is the one named f of t in the definition, and its Laplace transform is the uppercase f of s. Let's do another example. Knowing the second translation theorem, we're actually able to find the Laplace transform of the unit step function. And this is how we're going to approach it. Well, we know that the second translation theorem tells us how to find the Laplace transform of a product that involves the unit step function and another function, another translated function, right? As we can see here, we don't have that other function, but we can always put it there if we use the constant function 1. So I'm going to write, we need to find the Laplace transform of the product of 1 times the unit step function at 2. Now, for the second translation theorem to work, this cannot be just any function. It has to be a translated function. Well, in fact, it has to have the same amount of shift as this value at which the unit step function changes its value. But let's think about this constant function 1. Here it's graph. So we're looking at function f of t equals 1. It's just the horizontal line that crosses the vertical axis at 1. But let's think what happens if we shift this line. In particular, we're going to shift it two units to the right. Is it going to look any different? No. So if I shift the horizontal line two units to the right, it's still going to be that same horizontal line that crosses the vertical axis at 1. So what I'm going to add is that f of t minus 2 is still 1. In other words, by putting factor of 1, we created the translated function f of t minus 2. And now we have all the components to follow the second translation theorem. In fact, we're ready to write down the final answer. So first it's going to be e to the power negative 2s. Remember that we keep the sign. And now we have to multiply it by the Laplace transform of a non-shifted original function. Well, for us it's function f of t equals 1. The Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s, and that's what we put in our final answer, so times 1 over s. I can combine those two and say that the final answer is e to the power negative 2s over s. 
let's try one more example. So here we need to find the Laplace transform of the product of this unit step function at 3 and function 3t plus 1. While we do have a product, we need to remind ourselves that the first function has to be a translated function, and not just that, it has to be shifted three units to the right to match this unit step function. Well, you're very familiar with algebraic manipulations that we can do to create what we need in this case. So basically, we're first going to write that we want to have function 3 and then t minus 3 inside the parentheses. Always put the coefficient outside. And then t minus 3, well, that creates a shift to the right. And then we have plus 1. That's from the original function. And of course, we need to cancel that extra number that we added so that overall our function is not changed, right? So that's negative 9 that we added there to our function. Well, since we're subtracting 9, we need to add 9 so that our function stays the same. We'll simplify that all in the next step. And then I have the unit step function at 3. Now let's rewrite. So the Laplace transform. The first function becomes 3 times t minus 3 plus 10. And then the unit step function. And now once we have the shifted function and the amount of shift matches this value here in the unit step function, we're ready to apply the second translation theorem. So E will have power negative 3s. And then we have to multiply this by the Laplace transform of a non-shifted function. Let's write this down. So the Laplace transform of the function. And remember, to get the non-shifted function, we just simply have to get rid of the number that's being added or subtracted right next to the variable. So that becomes 3t plus 10. And of course, we know that the Laplace transform of a sum is the sum of Laplace transforms. The constant 3 can be placed outside of the Laplace transform. And now we're going to evaluate each. The Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared, so I'll get 3 over s squared. And the Laplace transform of 10, well, actually, it's 10 times 1, right? So Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s, and then I have this coefficient 10, which I could have put in front of the Laplace transform, but what we'll get is 10 over s. So what we got here, this answer, is the uppercase f of s from the second translation theorem, right? So that's the Laplace transform of the original not shifted function. And that's what we'll have to put here in the answer. So e to the power negative 3s is being multiplied by 3 over s squared plus 10 over s. And we can leave this answer like that or just do a little bit of algebra to combine fractions. So if I multiply the second one by s on the top and on the bottom, my answer will be e to the power negative 3s times 10s plus 3 over s squared. So that's another way to write down the final answer. And here's our last example to practice the second translation theorem. Here we have a Laplace transform of the product of sine of t and the unit step function at pi over 2. Now, we do have a product, but it's not quite in the form that we need, because remember, the function here has to be a translated function, and the amount of shift should match this value from the unit step function. So that's something that we need to create here without changing the original function. You already know that a very common technique is to write down what we need, and then think how we can make sure that overall function is not changed. So let's think what happens if we write down the sine function as a translated function. So sine of t minus pi over 2, because we want to have minus pi over 2 to match the unit step function. Well, to see what that equals to, and to know if we can keep our original function the same, we can apply the sine of a difference formula from trigonometry. Remember, it goes like this. It's sine of the first angle, so it's sine of t times cosine of the second angle, pi over 2, minus, we keep the sine, then it's sine of the second angle, pi over 2, times cosine of the first one, cosine of t. Well, we know that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that means that this product is 
on and sine of pi over 2 is 1. So it looks like the result is going to be negative cosine of t. So basically, if we change sine of t to sine of t minus pi over 2 to match the second translation theorem, that in reality will be equal to negative cosine of t, which is totally different from what we were given in the original function. And there is no easy way to adjust this result. But since we can see how nicely everything simplifies here, how about we try this with cosine? In other words, what happens if I say cosine of t minus pi over 2? Well, then we're going to apply cosine of the difference function, and it goes like this. It's going to be cosine of t times cosine of pi over 2 plus sine of t times sine of pi over 2. Okay, we already said that cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that means that this term is gone. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, and it looks like in this case we ended up with sine of t, which is exactly the function that was given to us originally. So what we just showed is that sine of t is the same as cosine of t minus pi over 2. So we can literally replace sine of t with cosine of t minus pi over 2. And that will be exactly how we want our functions to look like for the second translation theorem. So instead of sine of t, we're writing cosine of t minus pi over 2. And by the way, again, even though it looks different, we're not changing the original function because of the identity that we just showed. Um, then times the unit step function at pi over 2. Perfect, and we're ready to write down the final answer. So it will include e to the power negative pi over 2s times, and for that second factor we need to find the Laplace transform of a non-shifted function. So it means it's simply cosine of t, which Laplace transform equals to s over s squared plus 1. And that's what we put here in our answer. So if we combine those factors, we'll have s times e to the power negative pi over 2 s over s squared plus 1. And that's the final answer. Now, similarly to the first translation theorem, the second translation theorem will have an inverse form. And that's when we take the inverse Laplace transform of each side of this equation. This is how it's going to look like. So the inverse form of the second translation theorem goes like this. The inverse Laplace transform of the product of e to the power negative a s times the function f of s equals to the translated function f of t, where f of t is the result of the inverse Laplace transform of function f of s times the unit step function at a. So hopefully you see how sides got switched and now we're doing the inverse Laplace transform. Let's try one example um, illustrating how the inverse form of the second translation theorem works. So here we need to find the inverse Laplace transform of the function e to the power negative 2s over s minus 1. So to use the inverse form of the second translation theorem, we need to make sure that we have a product of e to the power negative a s and then some function f. So to make this a little bit more clear and obvious, I'm going to separate those two functions that I do have here. So that's the inverse Laplace transform of the function e to the power negative 2s times the function 1 over s minus 1. The answer will be the product of the translated function f of t and the unit step function at a. Okay, so let's start with the second part. It's a little bit easier and quicker. Remember, a comes from the power of e. So I'm going to skip this part. I'll leave it for the first factor. And then the second one will be the unit step function at 2. So that came from the power of e. Now my function here will be a shifted function. And the amount of shift will be 2 to match the unit step function. But first, let's try to find function f of t itself before its shift, because we know that function f of t is found by taking the inverse Laplace transform of this function f of s. Well, in our example, it's here. This is what f of s is. In other words, f of t is the inverse Laplace transform of the function 1 over s minus 1. 
And if we look at the table of Laplace transforms, then we'll see that it's simply e to the power t. So that's where I got this from. Okay, so going back to this result, now we found f of t. But remember, in our answer, we have to have f of t minus a. So this function has to be translated, and we show that by subtracting 2 from each t in that function. Well, we only have 1 there. So it becomes e to the power t minus 2. And that's the final answer.